All right, so today's topic that we're going to discuss is going to be Twitter. Go ahead and open any of your favorite web browsers. And we'll take a quick look over at, um, let's go over to Twitter.com. How many of you currently have a Twitter account? Okay, how many of you have a business Twitter account? Okay, so um, the thing with Twitter is that it can be used for business or for personal, just like any social network. When we looked at Google Plus last week, we saw that we needed to create a personal account and then we can create business accounts, business pages. Twitter isn't like that at the moment. You create one account and it'll be either business or personal. It does, there isn't any extra special different screen uh, for the business or the personal. So if you've already got a Twitter account, um, we'll log in in a moment. If you don't have a Twitter account, we'll create one together in just a moment. If you do have already one and it's a personal one, let's say, I still recommend that you um, create a brand new one for the, for the business. So you have to decide on which of those you'll be doing. Uh, if you came in a little late, remember you need to uh, print your name on the on the pink sheet wherever that ended up. Make sure you pass it around the pink sheet. And also, as I said last week, and I have to enforce it this time: no food or drinks allowed in the room, please. If you have any food and beverages, drinks, even if they have a nice tight cap, I do ask for you to put them off over here to the side, uh, not on the floor, not behind your monitor. You're gonna knock it over, please, everyone. If you've got some drinks. Take a moment to put them off to the side over here. <coughs> and if you could also put your drink over here, please. Your drink. Okay, so uh, Twitter um, has been around since about 2006, I believe, and um, it's a very popular network. It has hundreds of millions of users, about 320 million users globally at the moment. And so um, the, the thing about Twitter is that they're always changing the features of it because the latest one has a in an emphasis on on spontaneity and how you can keep up to date with everything on Twitter. The news, celebrities, technology, science, music, Comic-Con, etc. And so what we see as a preview here on the home page is this whole um, quick view of featured tweets, news, tweets, sports tweets, music tweets, etc. I've been using Twitter for a while now and I've seen it evolve where it used to be that uh, sort of you create a Twitter account and it just drops you in. Here's Twitter. If you don't have any friends or connections, it's kind of a ghost town like any social network. If you don't have connections, you know, you don't have any interactions. But the latest version of Twitter is that it really focuses on making connections. It still focuses more on people connecting with people rather than businesses connecting with people. Although we'll see how to take advantage of Twitter for business. So the first thing that we'll do here then is if you have a Twitter account, you can log in if you'd like. But I'm going to go through the process of creating a brand new account. And again, uh, I would recommend you create a brand new account, even if you've already got one, because we can delete it later. We can learn the, the, new, uh, the new features of, the, of a brand new account and then you can apply that to your old account and then delete this one later. So I'm going to select at the top right <coughs> corner, sign up. Well, as long as it's not food. Uh, so the first thing that it asks is, 
Uh, when you're joining Twitter here, full name, a phone number, or an email, password. And this full name is not your address like we saw also on Google+. Plus. When we created a Google Plus account, it asked us for our full name, but that didn't set up an address that was, for example, google.com slash my business. Same thing here. Full name will not give you the name up on top here. And the funny thing about this is Twitter has two names. One is this full name and one is the username. The username is the name that's going to be up on the address that is the unique name that only one person or one <coughs> company in the world can have. That address is unique globally. Only one entity in the world can have that name. Um, full name, however, that one is not restricted to one person. So here, if I wanted to, on full name, I can create the name Coca-Cola, Citibank, Nike. I can choose any of those pre-existing names, and it will let me. On the next screen, it'll say, okay, choose your username. And username is going to be the address, and that one is the unique one. Coke already exists, I can't take it. White House already exists, I can't take it. Victor already exists, I can't take it. So the thing about any social network is, even if you don't plan on using it, I would recommend when you hear about a new social network, go and claim the name claim the name so that no one else can take it when you perhaps finally decide to use it. Maybe you're thinking about getting into Instagram or getting into Snapchat or getting into YouTube or one of these networks that has existed for a while and someone might have already taken the name. So even if you're never going to use Snapchat, you might as well claim the name so no one else does. Here then we're going to, I'm going to make up a business. Victor's Bakery. And I can use spaces, capitalization, special characters. I think I can even use emoji here, you know, those little icons that we see all, all over the place. And pretty much anything you write here, I guess, except profanity and such, will be allowed. It gives me a check mark. Victor? Yes. What is the advantage? I mean, so I'm going to put my name in there, and it's just going to be in there for Twitter's information? It's going to be there for Twitter's information and for you to be found. If someone's gonna wants to find you as this business, for example, they can search Twitter, Victor's Bakery, and I could pop up. And so they can do my name if they don't know my company. That's right. But you have to decide which entity are you going to present online. Are you going to present yourself or are you going to present your business or both? So in this, right here, I put the name of my business. I would put the name of your business. Even if it says full name, this is where I would put in the name of the business. Mm -hmm. Because anyone can create a Twitter account, these are free. Um, that means spammers can create accounts. One way to possibly prevent the spam is to include a phone number or an email. Question? Yes, I have a question regarding about we are on the business account. Some of the same monthly, like 200, 25, something like that, 200 or some data for business account, or even an advantage of, you know, some kind of a gift or something like that. No, that doesn't sound right. They're not going to charge you to set up a Twitter account or use it monthly at all. What you, what we will see a little later is there are ways to promote your tweets, to pay your tweet to be visible more. That is, that is, that definitely exists. But to create your account and such, that uh, that you don't pay anything on that. So either add a phone number or an email. If you've already used an email account. On another Twitter account, it won't let you. It'll say, you've already got an account. Please sign in with that account. Um, but this is a way to help prevent spam. Um, I'm just going to make up an email address for the moment. It'll ask you for a password. You can change all of this later, of course.
And then we've got uh, Taylor Twitter based on my recent website visits. This is optional. It's turned on by default. This is basically what it's what it's going to tell you here is under learn learn more. What it's going to tell you is so that you get the most out of Twitter, so that you connect with the most relevant things. Would you like Twitter to pay attention to the websites you visited recently? This means it'll put a cookie on your computer. And a cookie is a little bit of code on your computer that most websites use. Either they tell you explicitly or they don't. And uh, websites are often, uh, for lack of a better term, tracking what you're doing online. So that in this case, for example, Twitter can show you tweets or accounts or content that really perhaps matters to you. Because if you read a lot of tech websites, then Twitter can show you content regarding technology. If you read a lot of, if you visit a lot of baking websites and such, Twitter could show you more cooking and baking content. If you don't want it to do that, you can turn this off. And then the content that you'll see perhaps will be a little bit more generic. This is, of course, completely up to you. It doesn't, it's not positive or negative. Privacy-wise, you could think of it um, as negative and such. This is up to you to decide. Um, the this, this service will work well either way, with or without that option. But I'm going to turn it off, and I'll click Sign Up. I added an email address, and then it asks for a phone number, but there is a Skip button. Again, uh, because Twitter has hundreds of millions of users, over 320 million users, there's, of course, many accounts that could be spam. And so in order for Twitter to help stamp out the spam, it's starting to ask more often. Many websites are starting to ask for more ways to verify that you are you and not a spammer. But if you don't want to add your phone number, you can easily skip it. Yes? There were two screens. One screen that was asking for your full name phone number or email, you have to do that one. And then on the next screen, because I did the email, then it asked me for a phone number, and that's the one I skipped. <laughs> All right, so here it says then at, then it says choose a username. This is the name that is unique. To, to all of the accounts on Twitter in the world. And so, based on what I've already filled in, it's suggesting to me Victor C. Bakery, Bakery underscore Victor, Victor underscore Bakery, or numbers and gibberish. So you can choose a suggestion, or you can try to use, or choose a name that you really want. The, the thing here, though, is no spaces, uh, no special characters, except underscores. So if I'm trying to add here Victor's Bakery, it's going to um, it's going to tell me that's not right because I've got an, uh, the apostrophe, for example. Okay, let's say I'm just going to do Victor's Bakery. Oops, this is taken. So this is what I'm saying about it being taken. If if this service has been around nearly a decade, someone might have already taken your name, even though your family has had it for 20 years. This can be changed as many times as we want. So perhaps I'll have to settle for Victor's underscore bakery. Oops, that's already taken. So as you can see, I've taught this class before. Two underscores. That'll work. 
So you have 15 characters, I believe, also. You can't write a whole sentence here either. I've had to deal with a, a client or two that they've got a long name, and then when we create their Twitter account, we have to creatively shorten it. So yeah, I believe you've got 15 characters or so. Yeah, I'm just at about the limit. So um, you have those limitations. You have 15 characters to work with. You can use numbers or letters. Capitalization, lowercase, doesn't matter. You can use underscores, but not any other symbols. And this can be changed. So I'm going to be Victor's underscore underscore bakery. I'm going to select next. You don't want to skip this because then it's going to give you sort of a name that you really don't want. It's going to have weird numbers or something. And I personally think, and my many of my social media clients as well, we don't recommend that you use usernames with numbers in them. Um, maybe a number one or number two is fine, but if it's like Victor1758, the more numbers you're using, the more you look like a spammer, because that's often a spammer tactic. They weren't able to to cap to get that name Oprah. So they're Oprah 15792767. So if you're gonna use numbers, be judicious. Maybe one or two numbers, not a whole string of numbers like your PIN number or birthday or whatever, just you know, one number. Or try to figure out a name that that works. I'm going to select next. So there's a little spiel here. Twitter is a constantly updating stream of the coolest, most important news, media, sports, TV conversations, and more, all tailored just for you. Tell us about all the stuff you'd love to help you get started. So again, at the moment, Twitter is a little bit more focused on people connecting with people. But definitely, it can be businesses connecting with people, businesses connecting with businesses. And so um, on this next screen it's going to give us suggestions about connecting. We're going to use Twitter like we used Google+, Plus, like we'll use Facebook, Instagram, whatever, as a way to build an audience. When we have an audience, we can then reach out to them, we can market to them, we can make them learn about something, we can get donations, we can get uh, feedback, tech support, we can give tech support, we can do anything. It's a communications channel. So I'm going to click Let's Go. What are you interested in? Choose one or more of the options below and we'll suggest some good stuff for you. Popular accounts. Right here, think about perhaps what's the audience you're trying to reach. If I go with popular accounts, it's going to suggest, I don't know, Kanye West and Kim Kardashian and all that stuff that I personally am not interested in. Maybe my business is not interested in that either. So whatever works with you here, I'm going to select food and drink and not popular accounts. You can turn them all on and it will suggest a bunch of accounts to you. These most likely, however, will not really be customers, potential customers, yet. For businesses, this screen is not that useful. For a regular person getting new, uh, getting on Twitter brand new, this is a really good screen because it helps you connect with potential companies or um, uh, sports figures, politicians, etc. But for businesses, I don't think it's as useful as it could be although I will show you that there is some use in a moment. So I'm just going to select the food and drink category. You can select more than one. Continue. Suggestions for you. Based on your choices, here are some suggestions for you. We recommend <coughs> following them all. Following people is how you get to see what people share. You will see their tweets, but they won't see yours unless they follow you too. This is one of the things that's perhaps a little confusing for people that use Twitter the first time. If you use the analogy of Facebook. I have a Facebook account. I get a friend request. I approve the friend request. Both of us are connected. It's a one-to-one -one relationship. We've both, we've both chosen to be friends, to be connected. So when I post something on Facebook, 
that person most likely then can see it. If they post something on Facebook, then I can see it. It's a one-to-one -one relationship on Facebook. Twitter and many other social networks like Google Plus are not a one-to-one -one relationship. They're a one-to-many because I can choose to connect with 500 people, but all those 500 don't need to approve that or connect back to me. Vice versa. I might be a popular account. I might have 5,000 that have connected to me, that have followed me, because they really care about my tweets, but I don't need to follow all 5,000 back. We really need to be judicious. Here it's suggesting, why not follow all of these accounts? Food and Drink. I don't know what the charger is about Food and Drink or Kevin Hart. The algorithm must be a little odd at the moment for me. But I'm going to turn on or off those that I do want to connect with. I'm going to turn them all off, but just select a few. <clears throat> going to select maybe five. Whatever you'd like. The point of this is that then you will see the tweets from these accounts that you choose. We'll see why that's valuable a little later. Continue. I've got step three out of six. I'm going to continue. There's a spot for me to add a photo, but I don't have a photo handy to upload. I do want to, however, add a photo as soon as I can. Because without a photo, you're going to be the generic egg icon. You know, little bird's egg. And that's, a, that's, a, that's an easy marker to show that you're a beginner, that you don't know what you're doing on Twitter if you've never changed your photo. This is where the logo of my company would go. I don't have the logo handy, so I'll do it at home. I need to skip this step for now. There's a spot here about connecting with your, with your address book on Gmail or Outlook or whatever. You can skip that. And this is up to you to decide to skip it or not. The reason you might want to connect is that if any of your friends and family are already on Twitter, this will tell you, John's on Twitter, would you like to follow them? You might also, they might also get a notification that says, Victor's Bakery just joined Twitter, why not follow them? So this could be a way to get some followers. <clears throat> but one reason why you might not want to do this is because you might not really be able to build your business on the backs of your friends and family. If you've got these connections, let's say a hundred people in your address book, your friends and family, your kids, your cousins, whoever, are you really going to use them as your audience where you're going to be selling them this, where you're going to be promoting that and marketing this and that? So you have to decide that. And you can connect later if you don't want to do this. There is a skip button that's nondescript at the very bottom here. I will skip this step unless you want to connect. I will skip. I appreciate you got into the address. Mm -hmm. well, as a business, if you don't want to be using the family of your email address, and uh, one, I was concerned about that. It's kind of if your original email was got a business angle, do you think that maybe they lost the email to connect it with your email address? Um, ideally, you want an email address of your business to connect to your Twitter account. I mean, other than that, some of the email address that you may be using for your family and friends, maybe because, uh, I don't know. If you do provide that one, then it would connect with your friends and family, more people to connect with, but perhaps use a business email instead, and that's what I would recommend. That's why it might not be a good idea to, to use a personal one. I would usually recommend to use the business one and not connect with the friends and family because that's, I, I think, it limits you a little bit in various aspects.
is it clean up on a some kind of maximum amount of following people? Because the place is out, right? I believe I believe it's two thousand. Uh, if you follow two thousand, there you have a limit until you get more followers. Then once you increase your followers, then you'll have more ability to follow more people. So they don't want you. For example, a spam account could create an account and follow ten thousand people. They don't want that. So they limit it to a certain amount, two thousand, I believe. And then after you get more followers, then you can also follow more. So let's take a moment here. Did everyone either create an account and you're at a screen that looks like this or log into an account? Anyone need a little help? So I had five of six. I uploaded my Gmail. Now where do I go? Is there a next button maybe? Stuff. Well, if you connected your Gmail, it might then be saying to. So we'll get an overview of the anatomy of, of a Twitter account and then how to use it. Um, depending on your account, I haven't confirmed my email so I might not have some features. You might have extra features. But at the top left corner, I see home, notifications, messages. You might also have one called moments. I'll talk about moments later. You've got the little Twitter bird. Search on the top right. And then uh, your profile, which mine is the egg. It's a brand new account. I want to change that as soon as possible. And that's clickable, so you can have a few options there. And then a button to tweet. So Twitter is a short messaging system. It has 140 characters per message. On Facebook, you can write hundreds of characters. On Google+, Plus, hundreds of characters. You can write a lot on those networks. Twitter, um, based on its age, was a network that was developed to send short messages. According to the history, they were trying to create a network, uh, you know, like an emergency network where people can connect with each other, firefighters and such, and pass out information in short chunks of information. Um, it has then evolved then to be global. They have, there's, a, there's Twitter accounts for so many things, for companies, products, banks, governments, politicians, actors, Olympians, regular people, fictional people, uh, products, brands, there's everything. Everything's got a Twitter account. And I really like Twitter. It's my second favorite social network um, because you can reach an audience really directly. Facebook is very powerful, very useful as we'll see, but it can be very limiting actually. Even though it has the most users, you can actually be limited in Facebook. We'll talk about that when we get to it. Twitter is one of the most open networks around because you will be able to connect with potential customers very easily and directly. The downside of that, of course, is be careful or you might come off as a spammer. We'll get to that. We're on the home screen, hopefully. And what I see here on the left side is a preview of my profile, very basic profile. Not much to look at. I don't have my logo yet. I don't have any sort of picture branding yet. There's Victor's Bakery and then my, my Twitter name, Victor's underscore underscore bakery. That's the one that you put on your business cards. That's the one that you tell people about, that at name right there, because that's what the address is of your Twitter account, twitter.com slash Victor's underscore underscore bakery. So your at name, the username, is the unique one that only one person in the world can have. And even if the person hasn't used that name that you want for five years, 
you're not going to be able to get it, unfortunately. I think this is one of the things that the social networks needs to deal with, all of them. That when these accounts fall fallow and no one is using them in one year, five years, ten years, Twitter, release that name. Let the person that really wants to use it, use it. For example, Southwestern College, the, the initials there are SWC. But they were a little late to the Twitter party and they weren't able to get at SWC. They had to get at SWC underscore news. And the person that actually has SWC hasn't used it in a long time. Twenty fourteen. More than a year. And so my statistics here show I've got zero tweets. I am following five. And yours might have an extra statistic, which is followers. Followers, then, is your audience. When I tweet something, my 20 followers could see it, my 500 followers could see it, my 1 million followers could see it. I don't have any followers yet. We'll talk about getting followers, of course. I see a a box of trends. This is what's hot on Twitter at the moment. Um, either hashtags or regular terms. Uh, I'll explain what all of those are in a moment, but this is what's going on with Twitter, what people are talking about. Apparently the Scream Queens finale is going on, that TV show. 54,000 tweets are going on right now about it. Voice Say with Jeffrey, whatever that is, 529,000 tweets. On the right side, I'm going to get suggestions of accounts to follow. The Chargers have an account. Ellen DeGeneres has an account. Many people, Jada De Laurentiis. As you use Twitter, it'll start to suggest better accounts for you because it'll know how, uh, it'll know what your what your page cares about so it'll show more accounts to connect with that are relevant. And in the center is the screen of content from the accounts that I'm following what their tweets are. So You'll see here, Twitter food. I followed Twitter food earlier, and it shows that this tweet here was posted about seven hours ago. Follow along as at Emeril shares his recipe for oysters Benville, Bienville, a New Orleans classic. I followed Marcus Samuelson. That's his tweet. Be sure to watch at Lydia Bastianik as she takes me home for the holidays for a at PBS special on December 11th. And the link. Because Twitter, even though it's limited to 140 characters, it can still have links. This is a link to some other website to see more. It can have hashtags. It can have at mentions. It can have pictures. Videos. There's a video up here. So it's yeah, not limited. What's that? You said there's a lot now. Before you wouldn't be able to do pictures and videos and stuff. Yeah, they've added a lot of multimedia because the text might be a little boring for us nowadays. So we can do pictures, we can do animation, videos. So you're not that limited, actually, 140 characters, because a picture, you can attach up to four pictures. You can attach a video that's, you know, 30 seconds long. You can add a link to your video that's five hours long. So this is, this is, a, this is a platform, a channel, a conduit for more. You, you're fine if you're simply posting regular text, but you're not limited there. You can also post links, pictures, video, sound, interviews, radio shows, etc. As I browse my timeline here, I'm seeing the names of accounts that I don't remember following, 
I don't remember following restaurant Gaia, but notice right above it, Twitter food retweeted with this little icon. That is that the Twitter food account that I followed retweeted, meaning they shared this from their account. They shared this other account's post through their account. So I follow Twitter food, but now I'm learning more. I'm being exposed to more that I originally didn't follow, like Alain Passard here. I didn't follow Alain. I followed Twitter food, but then now Twitter food is retweeting this. Uh, carrots uh, in vinegar and uh, lemon and milk. No, not milk. Uh, honey. So I can see more by um, by retweets. I want this eventually. I want to post something. I want to tweet something. Very cool. And then I want retweets. Why? Well, let's say I've only got 10 followers. So I post something. Sale this Saturday. Use this coupon. And my 10 followers see it. But one of those 10 followers has a thousand followers. And that one person could have retweeted my tweet and I've reached 1,010 people. Not just the 10 that I have directly, but the friends of friends. And out of those 1,000 that were retweeted to, maybe some of those also have a lot of connections. So one of those 1,000 also has another 5,000. So my tweet could reach even further. So it's like a chain reaction, friends of friends. So we'll talk about getting followers and retweets and all that good stuff. <coughs> If you click on the very top left of the notifications link, mine is empty. Yours might have something. As activity happens, a little number will appear on that bell. That little number is going to tell me what's happened. How many... did I get a new follower? Did I get a new reply? A retweet? Um, different activities that happen, they'll all be listed here. Get, <coughs> get notifications. Mentions. When someone uses at Victor's Bakery in a tweet to get your attention, I'll see it here. Retweets. When someone shares one of your tweets with their followers, I'll get this. Uh, I'll get known here. When someone likes my tweet, um, it'll show up here. And when I get followers, I'll know about it here. So these are the different actions that could happen um, with, with my content. Mentions, retweets, likes, follows. There's a messages link, which is for direct messages which is for talking privately. This is to connect with accounts on Twitter, but what we say is not public. It will not be shown to everyone in the world, only between you that have connected. So this could be useful for tech support. Let's say I'm selling a product online. And um, if, I, if, I have a, uh, if I make a connection with a customer, and they connect with me, they follow me, they can then send me a direct message, a private message, where we can go back and forth about their tech support issue, for example. So that could be one-on-one -on -one tech support. Pretty useful. Well, we're going to go into in-depth in detail on, on searching in a moment. But let's look at the, um, let's click on your icon there on the top right. You have various things, view profile, lists, etc. Let's click on view profile first. So click on your icon at top right, view profile. <coughs> that basically takes you to, your, to a screen, which is, this is, this is how people judge, judge your book. This is the book that people judge you. 
how does that go? Judge a book by its cover. This is the cover of your book. This is your 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 welcome screen, your your welcome mat of your account. My address is listed at the top there, my Twitter name. And when someone finds me on Twitter, searches me on Google, um, etc., and they come here, this is what they're going to see. No logo, no interesting graphic up there, very plain colors, nothing really about me. If I had a name that was something like Victor's Designs, well, are they a graphic designer, a web designer, um, an interior designer? We should fill in a biography and such, which we'll do in a moment. But I've got a very plain profile, and I don't even have a tweet yet. I don't have any tweets. I haven't tweeted anything. Here it's saying, would you like to tweet one of these uh, one of these generic tweets, or would you like to write your own? The very first tweet uh, is actually this one, just setting up my Twitter. The very first tweet that went out in 2006 was this. But actually, they spelled it T-W-T-R. So to keep the tradition alive, if this is your very first Twitter account, to keep the tradition alive, you can choose to tweet that tweet. I'm going to click that, and now that's my first tweet. All my zero followers would see this. But like I talked about with Google+, we still want to tweet stuff before we try to get followers, or else there's nothing to entice them to follow. So I tweeted that generic tweet, but I'm also going to click on the top right to publish a new tweet. This compose window appears, and we'll get all into all of its nuances, of course. Um, we can add text, links, media, location, something that's new also, our polls. But I'm just going to add a just a plain tweet, and we'll talk about hashtags and all that great stuff a little later. I just want to write here as my first kind of real tweet. Welcome to our Twitter. Follow us for exclusive content. Notice as I'm typing, it's telling me I'm running out of characters. I have 140 characters to work with, and every time I type something, characters include spaces, and punctuation, and numbers. Follows for a of content. You won't find anywhere else. Seriously, this stuff here is amazing. So you'll definitely want to follow. At a certain point, I go over my limit, the numbers become red, I've gone over my limit, and I can no longer tweet. I have 140 characters to say everything that I want to say. I'm just going to write something. Click Tweet. Now that's my second tweet. Like we talked about last week with Google+, think in terms what would be useful, what would be interesting for your current followers or potential followers, your current customers or your potential customers. Um, this tweet here is kind of jokey, it's fun, because the voice, perhaps, that I'm going to have on Twitter will be fun or frivolous, or friendly, or serious, stoic, professional, whatever your, whatever your voice of your company is should follow through on your social media. If on your website you never use contractions, are you going to do that on Twitter? Are you going to use contractions, full words, are you going to speak in the past tense, present tense, future tense? These are some things to think about, um, not rules or anything, but just things to think about because if you take my SEO class, for example, the search engine optimization class, there's a section in there where we, where we talk about a company profile and a marketing strategy. Because in order for you to succeed, not just online, but in the real world, you need to have a plan. 
in business? Who's your target audience? Who are you trying to sell to? Who are you trying to reach? How are you going to reach them? And how are you going to speak and write online? You don't have to stress about that too much right now. We're still getting our feet wet with these networks. That'll be something to think about. How are you going to manage your yourself online? So I've got a couple of tweets. Oh, look at this. I didn't plan this, but at the top left, I got a one right there. I've got some notification. Let's see what this is. I'm going to click notifications. Spam. Some spam account. Say, hi, Victor's Bakery. Request you to follow, blah, blah, blah. Thank you. So Twitter, the pros and cons of Twitter are that it's very open. You know, what I really like about Twitter is that a very open network that you can do what you want with it. The bad thing about Twitter is that it's a very open network and you can do what you want with it. <laughs> so right here, uh, companies can create these little programs, these little apps, for example, to pay attention whenever any tweet appears like this. So keywords. There's a little robot that was waiting for these keywords to appear. And then right away, then the spam bot writes this follow that. I will not follow them. Um, <laughs> but you could use something like this, and I'll, and I'll mention it uh, when, we do, when we talk about search. This could be useful in a good way in that what if, you're, what if you've got an alert for certain keywords, a certain product, maybe you're selling a certain product, and every time it's mentioned on Twitter, you don't want some auto message to come and harass a person. But every time something of, uh, you know, your keyword appears on Twitter, you could engage with them thoughtfully. That'll be via search, which we'll explore. But this is, that's what the notification screen is. Did anyone else get maybe this little spam bot also tweet to them? Yeah, I did. You got it too. Okay. Well, the cool thing is this. If you hover your mouse over an account, apparently they have uh, 1,000 followers, but you'll get some details about them, and then if you click on their account, there's going to be a gear when you go to any person's account, you can then go to the gear, mute, block report. So to keep Twitter nice, I would say spam accounts like this, let's stamp them out. So if you've got one, if you've got the same annoying thing like me, what I did was, you know, click on their icon to go to their profile. Every profile is going to have these gears. If you mute them, it's sort of like you turn the volume down, you're not going to pay attention to them, but they'll still exist. If you block them, you won't see any of their tweets ever anymore. Um, and then if you report them, you won't see their tweets and twi and you'll tell Twitter. You'll tell Twitter this is a bad account. So I'm going to take a quick moment to report this account because it is spam. And notice that report button is useful for many reasons, not just to report spammers, but what if you know, some crazed neo-Nazi is harassing you on Twitter. I'm not going to say that's going to happen to you, but if that happens to you, there's a way for you to say, you know, they're being abusive. If, you're, if your friends on Twitter are being harassed by some weirdos on Twitter, you can also report that. And it does, it does work the more you do it. I'm saying this is spam. So I will click next. Okay, we'll we'll check out that account. Would you like to ble be block them and mute them? I'm gonna say yeah, block them. I don't want to know anything more about them. And hopefully that account will get taken down. So the thing about Twitter is that to a large degree it's self-policed, which is good and bad. But um, it's a very open network, which I think I, is very good because uh, remember the Arab Spring that happened a few years ago. Countries in the Middle East literally changed. Their, their governments. People that were censored and forbidden from the official radio station, the official newspaper, the, the official television, could go to social media that isn't controlled by that government and were able to assemble, cause a revolution, change their government. Social media. You know, it sounds utterly hyperbolic to say that social media can change the world, but it can, and it has, and it does. It can change lives, it can change countries. 
this is never before has humanity had a communications medium like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, all of these things where anyone can be a publisher, anyone can reach an audience, use it for many, many, many purposes, good or bad, like anything. But I, I get a lot of personal fulfillment out of Twitter and business-wise too because as I said, not only do I teach this stuff, I'm part of a company where we do social media for clients and Twitter works really well to reach an audience, build an audience, keep an audience, make sales, etc. Can you show me a way that a bot Yes, when you go to any account, if you click on any account, then you're going to see this gear, this, this little... Oh, okay. Action. Okay. Click on that ah. and you'll see it there. So there's a lot of little nuances of Twitter, different screens and settings and options and such. We'll look at many of them. We'll also look at uh, how to use it effectively, reaching an audience. Um, when we talked about Google Plus, we talked about communities, which I really like. That's a way to connect with people on a specific topic. The closest to communities on Twitter are hashtags, which we'll talk about. We're going to take our first break, but before we do, what I would recommend is if you go to your setting, if you go to your little um, user icon at the top right and then go to settings, there are a variety of settings, I think a little too many settings. There's a lot of settings here on the side for you to, um, for you to look at. We're not going to look at them all. But before the break, what I'm going to say is go to your settings and then go to the email notifications subsection. At the moment, these are all on. You're going to get a bunch of emails as you use Twitter as a beginner because all of these are on. I sort of feel these are not that useful because I'm going to use Twitter when I log in. I don't want it to really be sending me a lot of emails to my inbox. You might want to do that as notifications, but you're going to get a notification in the website. If you've got the app, you're going to get a notification on the app. To also get notified on your email, I think that's a little too much. So there's a section here related to your retweets, activity, a lot of emails. You're going to get a lot of emails, unfortunately. I think they're a little too overboard on this aspect, so I want you to see this. Turn on or off the things that don't interest you, such as I don't want to get news about Twitter products, but I do want to get tips. I do want to see things that I missed. Or you can click turn off and everything turns off. So you want to you want to explore that screen on your own and show you one more thing then we'll take a break. Web notifications also similar to that. I'm not I've chosen not to get any emails, but what I recommend under web notifications leave all of these on and change them instead of saying tailored for you by anyone. Because if you leave them tailored for you, you're sort of in an echo chamber. You're only going to be notified of things that are sort of like in front of your nose. I would recommend by anyone because if you are not following someone, you might not get the notification that they're trying to interact with you. If you leave it by anyone, you don't have to have a connection first before someone tries to interact with you. And you may think, that's leaving me way too open. Well, that's the social in social media. You can, of course, tailor it, but I would recommend if you're going to be a business, you want to have your door open to a degree to any potential customers, followers, interactions. So I recommend change these web notifications to leave them all on and change them to notify me by anyone and save
let's take our first break. When we come back, we'll talk about other uh, aspects of feature, uh, other aspects of Twitter. It's uh, 7:02. We'll be back at 7:12, and then we'll go on. <laughs>